Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Benjamin Trail NP2 gas ram on test, but before that, I'm out hunting with the spring powered Air Arms Pro Sport. <laughs> We're at Park Farm on the Somerset and Wiltshire border today. You can actually book air gunning holidays and come and stay here and apart from being a really tranquil place to stay, it's also got an on-site gun shop and shooting range. Now some of you will probably also recognise it as the place that we use for shooting the Air Gun Show gun reviews, but we're not testing guns today, we've actually been given permission to come out on a hunt. Now the woods here and managed as a pheasant shoot, so there's a wide variety of pest species here, although today we're going to be setting our sights on grey squirrels and corvids. Some of you have asked to see more hunting with spring-powered air guns, so I'm out with the Air Arms Pro Sport today, and I've coupled that with the Tasco Target Environment Scope. The combo's been producing some really good groups on my garden practice range, so I'm keen to see how it performs in the field today. A bit more detail on the Tasco scope. I'm using the 2.5 to 10 by 42 model today, and that 2.5 to 10 times mag is just about the perfect configuration for hunting with air guns. And the optical quality is also really impressive for a scope that costs just £116. The windage and elevation turrets make for quick and easy adjustment to zero and have a good positive click at each stop. I also really like the reticule. With just four mil dots on each of the crosshairs, you've got plenty of reference points without the scope picture being too cluttered. So, I'm happy with my hardware and how it's performing. Now it's time to get on with the hunt. And I quickly spot signs of pests in the woods. There's a ditch here that runs down past a pheasant release pen and the banks are absolutely riddled with rat holes generally stands to reason that where there's water there's rats and I should think if you came back here after dark with night vision or a lamp you'd certainly get some shots particularly during the winter months but today we're going to be targeting a grain feeder that the owner Roe Normans pointed out to us so I'm going to head on up towards the woods those rats can wait for another day Woodland that's managed for pheasant shooting offers various pest species easy feeding opportunities around grain hoppers. We've had a tip off there's one in these woods that's receiving frequent attention from uninvited diners. So it's the obvious place to target during our short session. Well this is the feeder that we're going to be targeting. It's been set up off the ground to keep the badgers away but apparently the squirrels have still been having a feed so I'm just going to give it a handful of peanuts, a bit of added appeal, and then set up in the hide that I put up while I was waiting for Nicky the cameraman to arrive. With the hide already in place comfortably within range of the feeder, all I need to do is get myself into position and out of sight. It's not a large hide, but it's big enough for me to wait in relative comfort and enables me to shoot from a stable sitting position when my quarry presents itself. This quickly assembled hide helps to keep me inconspicuous, but it won't hide me completely. So I put my head net on to keep my face hidden 
and then put my hat back on in the hope that the shade from the peak will add to my concealment. Full camouflage means full camouflage, so after loading up the Air Arms Pro Sport it's on with the gloves to hide those remaining patches of skin that might catch my quarry's eye in the low evening sun. This isn't the perfect hide site because it's got quite a scant backdrop and I've got the evening sun behind me which is going to skyline me. However, it's about the only place that we could get a clear view of the feeder and it gives us a good safe backdrop in the form of a very steep bank. My Tasco scope is parallax adjustable down to just 2.5 metres. While it's unlikely that I'll ever need to focus it that close, it makes for a very sharp sight picture when ratting at close range. This evening, I've got it set at just over 20 metres to keep me sharp on that feeder. This wood's absolutely teeming with wild birds and they're really munching their way through those peanuts I put out. We just had a black cap and a nuthatch flight in which is really lovely to see. Well, we're seeing plenty of diners at the feeder but still no squirrels. There's a pheasant up there now and it looks like that's going to be the last of my peanuts gone. We're all coming in, down the oak tree right next to the feeder. The squirrel looks as though it's poised ready to hop up to the feed. I don't want to fluff the shot, so I take my time and wait for it to climb on before I get ready to settle the crosshairs onto its head. That's got us off the mark. It's quite a tricky shot. It's only about 20 metres. But what I'd normally do with the PCP is lean the cylinder of the gun into the net of the hide so that it's cradled and taking the weight of the gun and giving me a bit more support. Using a recoiling gun, I'm not quite sure how that would affect the zero. So I had to take the weight of the gun, hold steady myself. Very satisfying kill. It's in with another pellet in the hope of more action on the grain feeder and we don't have to wait very long until another diner drops in. We had a J in them but it spooked. This hide really isn't substantial enough for targeting jays, and I reckon it probably spotted me moving against the sky. I sit tight and the greedy jay is soon back for another go at the grain. This time the colourful corvid lingers to peck at the seed giving me time to get it in the Tasco's crosshairs. I just need it to sit up and show its head. That was more like it. The jay came back in. It had its back to me, but that was probably a good thing because it couldn't see me moving as I pushed the gun through. I waited. It raised its head just high enough to offer me the headshot. I took it. That's another really good clean kill. Right, well we need to get away, so that's going to have to be all for this evening I'm afraid, apart from packing up the hide and picking up what we've shot.
As much as I enjoy my high shooting, it's always a relief to be able to stand up and stretch my legs when the session draws to a close. Park Farm has been kind to us during our short session, treating us to some great wildlife sightings and a bag that includes fur and feather. I'm just sorry not to be spending a week in the holiday cottage. Well, that's not a bad shot with the Springer. That jay didn't show me much of its head, but I managed to land that pellet right in the middle of its brain box and it really wouldn't have known what hit it. The jays really are very handsome birds, but unfortunately, they do share the magpie's taste for other birds' eggs and young, so they really do rate very high on the gamekeeper's pest list. They're also very crafty birds, don't tend to fall for the larson trap, so Rose's gonna be very pleased that we've managed to account for this one and the squirrel. The pro sport there proving that spring power can still cut it in the hunting field. And now it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. Baskers launched its 2015 Air Gun Survey and everyone who fills it in will be entered into a draw to win a BSA Lightning XL SE airgun and scope. The organisation is carrying out the survey to ensure that its membership package and wide range of services meet the needs of modern airgun shooters. Simply log on at the address on screen by the end of August and answer a few simple questions on the sort of airgun shooting you do and what you think Basque should be doing. All submissions are made in confidence and it shouldn't take more than five minutes of your time. For more information, get in touch with Basque. Hawk has released a glossy new brochure showcasing its latest collection of optics, including scopes, mounts, lasers, binoculars, rangefinders and lamps. It also includes details of the awesome new Frontier Scope, which is tipped to be one of the top air gunning optics of the year. If you want to drool over this great lineup of gear, either download a PDF or order a hard copy via Hawk's website, hawkoptics.co.uk. There's a pitch black Fieldmaster night vision unit worth £385 up for grabs in the free to enter competition in the July issue of Egg and Shooter magazine, out now. The digital NV unit comes with an Osram Olsen black T20 illuminator and 1000 lumen torch, and it's perfect for after dark rat and rabbit shooting. This month's packed issue includes features on rabbit and squirrel hunting, an in-depth review of the new Daystate Pulsar, a head-to-head -head between the Walther LGV and LGU Springers, workshop advice, vintage air guns, BSA Red Star pellets on test, a review of the Nico Sterling Panamax scope and much, much more. And finally, it's less than eight weeks until the CLA Game Fair which is moving up north for 2015 to Harewood House in Yorkshire. Organisers say the air gun area this year will be bigger than ever, with competitions and instruction for shooters of all ages and abilities. Plus, there's a huge array of field sports attractions, including a packed gun maker's row, gun dog demonstrations, a clay line, fishing and more. And you can save on the price of entry by booking online. Head to gamefair.co.uk and get your tickets now. That was the Egan Show News. Something a little bit different this week, we've got a gas ram air gun on the test bench. It's the Benjamin Trail NP2, distributed in the UK by ASI. It costs £380 and that includes a Crossman Centrepoint 3 to 9 by 40 scope. All you need to add is a tin of pellets and it's ready to shoot. 
Measuring up at 116 centimetres, it is quite a long gun, but thanks to its synthetic stock, it still weighs in at under four kilos with scope and mounts fitted. That handle also helps to keep it well balanced and this gun feels very good on aim. The robust ambidextrous stock is quite stylized, but it's functional too. Although fairly flat, the rubber butt pad feels comfortable in the shoulder. There are also stippled areas to improve grip along the forend and on the front part of the pistol grip. And that pistol grip feels like a drop down because of the large thumb hole cutaway behind it. It makes for a comfortable grip and gives really good trigger attack. The raised cheek piece is just the right height to give good eye alignment when using the supplied scope and mounts and the fact that this gun comes fitted with sling attachments is an added bonus. From the finish of the metalwork to the snug fit between action and stock, build quality is very good. The full length barrel shroud looks the business and also does a great job of hushing down the muzzle blast. This has to be one of the quietest gas ram air guns I've ever shot. The Picatinny scope rail means there's no need to worry about the mounts creeping. The tensioning bolt sits right between those very deep slots, so it's not moving anywhere. I was really impressed with the brightness of the supplied scope. It's got a mill dot reticule and the fact that it's parallax adjustable right down to 10 meters is going to be really handy for anybody that intends to use it for close range ratting. This air gun produces power close to the 12 foot pound legal limit, yet the cocking stroke is amazingly smooth. It takes quite a knock to unlock the barrel, but then the downward pull takes hardly any effort. After thumbing a pellet into the breech, it takes quite a clunk to lock the barrel back into place. But then I think that's a good thing because it means there's going to be no play on that barrel once it's clicked into its lockup. The firing cycle is just as smooth as the cocking stroke. The nitro piston gas ram system is clearly very efficient. It feels fast but doesn't have the harsh recoil I've come to expect from many gas ram air guns. In fact, there's hardly any discernible kick. That slick firing cycle would be wasted if this air gun didn't have a decent trigger setup and the one on the Benjamin certainly exceeded my expectations. It's a two-stage adjustable unit, and although the blade is a little more curved than I usually like, the wide front edge gives plenty of feel. In practice, the first stage did feel a little bit heavy, but the second stage let off was crisp and predictable with absolutely no creep. The manual safety catch is located right in front of the trigger. That makes it very easy to reach, although I don't think it's the safest place to put it. You push it back to make the gun safe and then flick it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. One thing I do really like about it is the fact that it's resettable, so you don't have to pull the barrel back down to re-engage it. Apart from being well constructed and easy to cock, the NP2 is a really enjoyable gun to shoot. So let's get on with the accuracy test and see what it can do. That wasn't bad for a brake barrel. Apart from the third shot which I snatched away to the right, the 2.2 calibre test gun has knocked out a five shot group of about half an inch at 20 metres. That's the sort of accuracy I'd be looking for for close range farmyard or backyard pest control. It's also a brilliant plinking gun. I've put a couple of hundred shots through this gun now and it's worth pointing out that it's still dieseling a little bit. So given more time to iron that out, get accustomed to the gun and experiment with different pellets, I reckon I could squeeze even more accuracy out of it. At comfortably under £400, the Benjamin Trail NP2 offers impressive value for money, especially when you consider that it comes with a decent scope and a set of mounts. You don't need charging gear and that nitro piston action should give years of fuss-free use. It's a smooth 
an exceptionally quiet brake barrel gas ram that I reckon will find favour with air gunners looking for a reliable rifle that will withstand the rigours of proper use. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport. It's not a large hide, but it's big enough for me to wait in relative comfort and enables me to shoot from a stable sitting position when my quarry presents itself. This quickly assembled hide helps to keep me inconspicuous, but it won't hide me completely. So I put my head net on to keep my face hidden and then put my hat back on in the hope that the shade from the peak will add to my concealment. Full camouflage means full camouflage, so after loading up the Air Arms Pro Sport it's on with the gloves to hide those remaining patches of skin that might catch my quarry's eye in the low evening sun. This isn't the perfect hide site, it runs down past a pheasant release pen and the banks are absolutely riddled with rat holes. Generally stands to reason that where there's water there's rats and I should think if you came back here after dark with night vision or a lamp you'd certainly get some shots particularly during the winter months. But today we're going to be targeting a grain feeder that the owner Roe Normans pointed out to us so I'm going to head on up towards the woods. Those rats can wait for another day. Woodland that's managed for pheasant shooting offers various pest species easy feeding opportunities around grain hoppers. We've had a tip off there's one in these woods that's receiving frequent attention from uninvited diners. So it's the obvious place to target during our short session. Right, well this is the feeder that we're going to be targeting. It's been set up off the ground to keep the badgers away but apparently the squirrels have still been having a feed so I'm just going to give it a handful of peanuts, a bit of added appeal, and then set up in the hide that I put up while I was waiting for Nicky the cameraman to arrive. With the hide already in place comfortably within range of the feeder, all I need to do is get myself into position and out of sight. we've actually been given permission to come out on a hunt. Now the woods here are managed as a pheasant shoot, so there's a wide variety of pest species here, although today we're going to be setting our sights on grey squirrels and corvids. Some of you have asked to see more hunting with spring powered air guns, so I'm out with the Air Arms Pro Sport today, and I've coupled that with the Tasco Target Environment Scope. The combo's been producing some really good groups on my garden practice range, so I'm keen to see how it performs in the field today. A bit more detail on the Tasco scope. I'm using the 2.5 to 10 by 42 model today, and that 2.5 to 10 times mag is just about the perfect configuration for hunting with air guns. And the optical quality is also really impressive for a scope that costs just £116. The windage and elevation turrets make for quick and easy adjustment to zero and have a good positive click at each stop. I also really liked the reticule. 
With just four mil dots on each of the crosshairs, you've got plenty of reference points without the scope picture being too cluttered. So, I'm happy with my hardware and how it's performing. Now it's time to get on with the hunt. And I quickly spot signs of pests in the woods. There's a ditch here. Welcome to the air gun show. This week we've got the Benjamin Trail NP2 gas ram on test. But before that, I'm out hunting with the spring powered Air Arms Pro Sport. We're at Park Farm on the Somerset and Wiltshire border today. You can actually book air gunning holidays and come and stay here. And apart from being a really tranquil place to stay, it's also got an on-site gun shop and shooting range. Now, some of you will probably also recognise it as the place that we use for shooting the air gun show gun reviews. But we're not testing guns today because it's got quite a scant backdrop and I've got the evening sun behind me, which is going to skyline me. However, it's about the only place that we could get a clear view of the feeder and it gives us a good safe backdrop in the form of a very steep bank. My Tasco scope is parallax adjustable down to just 2.5 metres. While it's unlikely that I'll ever need to focus it that close, it makes for a very sharp sight picture when ratting at close range. This evening I've got it set at just over 20 metres to keep me sharp on that feeder. This wood's absolutely teeming with wild birds and they're really munching their way through those peanuts I put out. We just had a black cap and a nuthatch flight in which is really lovely to see. Well, we're seeing plenty of diners at the feeder but still no squirrels. There's a pheasant up there now and it looks like that's going to be the last of my peanuts gone. We're all coming in down the oak tree right next to the feeder. The squirrel looks as though it's poised.